Okay, so if I jump then into using the software and taking you step by step through some of the first uh, concepts. So to begin with, this is QPath, this is the user interface. If you want to open an image, the natural place to start is by going to File and Open and then finding somewhere a suitable image you can open that way. I would definitely not have the patience to do that very often. So a much easier way is if I find my images within Windows Explorer and just drag them on top of QPath. And in general, you can open things in QPath that way. Similarly, as we're going to look in a little bit more detail through the software, I tend to use a lot of shortcut keys. And whenever I give live demos, then occasionally I'm told afterwards that it's not always clear exactly what I'm doing. So my solution to that, as my solution to so many things is, at the moment, uh, write a script. So I created a QPath script. I drag it on top, and if I run that, then if I press shortcut keys and I get carried away here, out of force of habit, you'll be able to see what keys I'm pressing. So I'll press the keys to separate the stains, you'll be able to see them. Press M to move around, you can see it. Um, so if you look at this window in the bottom left, you'll see the shortcut keys that I press. Okay, so going back to the image that we opened, we drag the file on top of QPath and we want to navigate it. So the basic controls are, we can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and to zoom out. We can click on the image and drag it to move around, change the field of view. And also we can click on this little preview in the top right hand corner um, to take us directly to a part of the image that we want. And if you really wanted to, you could use the arrow keys as well. And you can see as I press the keys, these turn up in this bottom left panel. Once you have an image open though, and you can start to browse around and use QPath as an image viewer, you should probably at an early stage check out some properties of the image. So if I look in this left hand pane, there is a number of tabs and we'll come to most of them later. The first one is project and we'll create a project in a moment, but the one I want to look at now is the one called image. If I click on that, it gives me the path to the image that is opened and some basic metadata, including how the image is opened the library, open slide in this case it was used to open it, the pixel size in microns, which is necessary if we're going to make any kind of measurements in physical units, and the width and height of the image. But the most important one that I want to draw your attention to here is the image type, which you can see is set to be Brightfield H&E, which is appropriate for this image. But I need to point out that this isn't read from the image file. And so this is QPath's best guess based upon the colors that it sees within the image and is not necessarily going to be right. So this is important because this will impact some of the processing steps that we might apply later, like cell detection. Also, I pointed out already, and we'll see it in more detail later, that you can digitally separate the stains in QPath just by typing numbers. So if I press two, I get the hematoxylin, three, the eosin. This is based upon some default estimates of the stain color and different numbers gives me different color transformations. But the reason I get hemosloxone with two and eosin with three is because this image type is set to H and E. If I double click and I set the image type to say HDAP, then two shows as blue, three shows as brown. And so the color transforms are different. And this is one way in which the image type influences what QPath does. And it's also used internally for cell detection and so on. So you really want to be sure if you're going to process an image in any way that the image type is correct and be aware that QPath is making its best guess. If it's wrong, you should always check it. And if it's wrong, you can double click and then you can set the image type to be something more appropriate. 